Yes! Daisy and I are headed to the cabin for an overnight. Have lights. Oh, nice. Hey, Brooke Whipple here. Welcome to my channel. Gonna do an overnight in the cabin tonight. It's gonna be so cozy. Me and Da Wolf. Gonna have a steak. Kick back. Heck yeah, man. It's getting nice and warm in here now. Check my fire. Got some nice hardwood. This should do me good for a while. It doesn't take much to get a get it nice and warm in here. I got my slippers on. Check it out. <laughs> Floor's a little chilly. I'm gonna get my steak going. Of course I'm, of course I'm having steak. Of course. Yeah. Give me some steak. I'm gonna put a giant couple chunks of butter in these pans. One for the steak, one for the mushrooms. Get these things heating up and uh, cut up some mushrooms and garlic. Be pretty amazing. I think I'm gonna ramp this up a little and uh, put it right in here on the fire. Get it cooking a lot better. Oh man, this looks and smells so good. Oh, mushrooms and garlic, that's just a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It smells so good in here. All right, I'm gonna get this steak on. I think I'm gonna put these on top and do the same thing with the steak. Put it right in on the, on the fire. Okay, here it is. I'm gonna have to scrunch it because, you know, I do. oh, 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 no, no, no. Tragic. <laughs> okay, stick in there a little big steak. See, it doesn't really it doesn't really fit in there. So a little salt and pepper, and it's going in right on the flameage. Some salt on there. Nice. Now it's going in the flameage. There we go. That'll do good in there. 
That'll do much better than on top. Oh my goodness! Do you hear this? The key to a good steak is not messing with it. You don't, you don't touch it while it's on one side. You let it brown really, really, really good. So I think I'm probably at that point where I can flip this. So this should be amazing. Ready for it? Oh, oh yeah, it was time. It was time, look at that steak. In the wood stove she goes. Good steak only needs salt and pepper, but of course I'm gonna have some A1. Cause I, I you know, I gotta have my A1. I get this thing back in. Get that side nice and brown. Now I'm not gonna touch this. I'm gonna let it sit there. Do work its magic. All right guys, I think we're good. I'm gonna pull this thing out. Put it on a plate. Oh, yeah. Look at this. You see that? <laughs> oh my. That that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. <laughs> Let's eat. Let's slather it with these mushrooms. Mushrooms and garlic. Oh yeah, isn't that amazing? Oh, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yes, it is. Bring this over here so I can see what I'm doing. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. The sunshine we had today was amazing. Thank you for this cabin, the strength you give us to build this cabin. Lord, thank you for your blessings. I am beyond blessed. And I pray for everyone watching this video that you would bless them as well, Lord. Thank you for this food, this steak, this mushrooms, these delicious things that you give us. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hmm. Let's eat. Oh my goodness. You know the deal, guys, right? Are you new to this channel? Because if you don't know the deal, the deal is, the deal always is that you, you get the first bite. There it is. Take the first bite. Open up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. Mm-hmm. First meal in the cabin. Had to be a steak. This, my friends, all that work, all that work, this is the payoff. Sitting by candlelight, food cooked on the wood stove, Steak and mushrooms. Salt and pepper. Mmm. Oh my goodness, that's so good. Mmm. I wish you were here. I've got room. I've got room for all of you. Look at this place. It's huge. <laughs> oh man, does that hit the spot? I'm gonna save some for Maisie. Now I got dinner for her too. And then I got all the juices from my pan to pour over her food. Oh my goodness, she's gonna love it. Mmm, I love it. You guys see this? Oh man, so, so good. That's just some amazing food off of a wood stove. Thank you, Lord. Mmm. All right, I do have A1. I mean, I can't not do A1. It's a good steak by itself, but I gotta have some A1. Maisie has not wanted to come in yet. She's right out here. Oh yeah, there she is right there. I can see her out the window. I've got some goodies for her, but uh, 
she she loves to be outside. I mean, you guys know if you've watched my videos, that dog loves to sit outside and bark and bark and bark at everything going by, the coyotes, the, the Bigfoots, the Yetis, the dogmen. She's on it. I'm safe. Good girl. <laughs> Keeping mama safe. Breaking in the cabin with a steak. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, I did turn off my lights just to conserve the battery, and the coyotes are howling, so I'm going to go outside and see if you can hear them. Come on, Maisie. Good girl. Come on. She went right back out. Oh, here she comes. She sees. Oh, okay. But I got some goodies to put on top of that for you, Maze, too. All oh, the juice. Oh, man. Doggy delight. Try to get some of my steak, too, because it's too much. There's the wolf. Here you go. Want some of this? The wolf needs goodies. There you go. Good girl. All right, guys, look at this. This is for the wolf. Why don't you just lift the plate? I'm fine with that. You can just have the plate. There you go, baby. That's a happy wolf. Okay, for dessert, I'm gonna core this apple. Without cutting myself, hopefully. Oh, the wolf. The wolf wants in. I'm gonna core this apple, fill it with brown sugar, and put some pistachios in there. Throw it in a little crock. Just like that. Nice salty pistachios. Ooh, not that one. That's got the shell. Oh, I should eat one. Got the apple, pistachios, the brown sugar. And the lid. I'll take this to the stove. I'm just gonna put it there. I'm in no hurry. I could put it inside, but inside it. All right. All right. This is has just been sitting on the stove top. But look at it. Ooh, it's crazy. It's made a giant mess on the stove, but. Baked apple. Mm-hmm. See how that is. It boiled over, so let's put it right here. Let's see what we got. It's somewhat soft. It looks pretty delish on the bottom. So yeah. Not too bad. Dip it in there in that caramely goodness. Just need to let it cool a little bit. All right, let's try this. Hmm. So good. It's got a nice sugary. Here, you want to try? Yeah, it's too dark. Pretty good. Nice little cleanse of the palate after a big, thick steak. But honestly, I'm getting sleepy. I could just soon go to bed. But this is nice. Whew, okay. It is bedtime. <laughs> and look who came inside. The wolf has settled in. Hi, baby. You just lay down. You were in your nice little bed. It's okay. You just go back to sleep. Losing power here on my, my power generator. But, yeah. I'm going to have to do this in candlelight. I've got my cot and my goodies in here. So, I'm going to get my bed ready. I'm going to shut the lights off. 
Okay, okay. There we go. Alright, it's just candlelight now. Just awful pretty. So, in here, I got the sleeping bag. Cot. I'm gonna put this cot together. Oh, you can stay inside. You gotta go outside again. You gotta go outside. Okay. There you go. There we go. Still got the lights. Still got the candles going on, but here's my bed. Got the foot down here, it's on a nice cot. And um, get Maisie back in here, get her on her bed. We'll be all set for night night. All right, good night Maze. Got the wolf back in, she's good to go. I need to blow out these candles. See you in the morning. Morning guys. Slept pretty good. Now it's daylight. You can see my setup. So this is good. I'm gonna get up. I already have I kept my fire going pretty much all night. I just get up, throw some wood in there. So I got already had my hot water and I put my breakfast on the stove to heat up. So yeah. Time to get up. <clears throat> the wolf is outside. <clears throat> I hear her. Be a nice day. It's cloudy. It's a bit feels warmer already. Birdies are waking up. It's a little hot in here, so I got the I got the window open. But what I'm gonna do is put this stuff away, and I'm gonna make some coffee. I'm gonna show you this this inflatable pad that I have. Rakea Designs. Interesting thing about this mat right here is it's double. It's like a double walled um, sleeping pad. So if the, you were to get a puncture on this side, this side would still completely inflate or vice versa. So this is, this is a pretty cool mat. You should check it out. I'll put the link below. And they've got really easy one-way valves. So just really easy to inflate and deflate. And this cot, this cot's great too, really lightweight. Marchway, I'll put the link below to that too. Super easy to put together. I think it weighs four pounds and folds up really nice, really comfortably wide and stable. froze overnight so I'll get her some new water. Some new vittles. Daisy! Mm -hmm. Hey, wolf. Want some breakfast? Here we go. Gotta feed the livestock. Dad's a good girl. My turn. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Nice to sit here and look at the birds and be in the quiet. Oh, well, here is the wolf eating. The birds outside and my teapot on the stove. It's pretty great. Now we got the hat on. Ready for the day. And quiche. So I have leftover quiche that I put 
over here and it's hot and ready to be slathered in Tabasco and salsa. Mm. Okay. Oh yeah. Pepper. Need lots of Tabasco. Looks about right, a little bit more there. Homemade pico. Need lots of that. That right there. This there is the stones. cabin strength thank you that I woke up another day may I take no day for granted thank you Lord in Jesus name amen mm. oh so I love quiche this is this has got sausage and broccoli mushrooms scallion Here you go, take a bite. It's all yours. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh man. This is the best breakfast, breakfast nook. It's a breakfast nook. <laughs> I like that. This is the best breakfast nook ever. I like it. This is so worth all that hard work. Beautiful. Chickadees. Ah! It's good. Life is good. Hey guys, I wanted to shout out this dog bed. This is made by White Duck Outdoors. They heard that I was looking for a dog bed for Maisie and they sent me this. Now White Duck Outdoors, they're the people that make that bell canvas tent that I just love in the winter. In fact, I'm gonna be doing an overnight in that tent here real soon. So this is a canvas dog bed and it'll totally, the outside will zip off and you can wash it. But Maisie loved it last night. She slept here all night and uh, the wolf was so happy. So we gotta think, White Duck Outdoors for sending me this beautiful dog bed. And they've agreed to give you a discount if you go and order through the link below. You get 10% uh, off either one of their canvas bell tents or one of these dog beds. So go check that out. Highly recommend the company. They really deal with sustainable cotton um, harvesting and practices. So very cool. Thank you White Duck Outdoors for the dog bed for the woof. All right guys, so as promised, I told you I would do a little Q&A here today about the cabin. A lot of you had a ton of questions. I was getting a lot of the same questions over and over. I'm gonna try to cover as many as I can, but not keep it too long. One of the biggest questions we got is how much did this place cost to build? And we figured we got about three grand into it. And some of that is, is really variable, depending on the price of your materials and depending on how you wanna finish the inside. Now just the floor and the ceiling of this place cost about $900. So the tongue and groove and the pine floor were two of the biggest expenses of the inside build. The rest, you know, I used furring strips for a trim. I used beadboard, which is about $19 a sheet for these end walls, you know, and the rest is just kind of labor. And then you've got, you know, the stain and the paints is, you know, another 50, 60 bucks. So, <clears throat> You could have completely painted the floor instead of putting down boards. You could have done OSB 
you know, for everything else. You can make it as expensive or as cheap as you want on the inside because you're going to finish it however you want and you can cut corners and use whatever you have. So it depends on, you know, like these shelving systems or what, you know, little things that add up. You don't have to do that, but I would say the interior was probably, probably about a grand or $1,100 without the furniture. And the furniture I bought, you know, this is a $400 chair, which is pretty expensive, I think. And then my hammock chair was like 300. These, those are luxury items. You know, you, you could go to the thrift store, which we've always done. This is the first new chair I've ever bought in my life. So it's a little bit of a luxury item. Obviously, you don't have to furnish your cabin like this. The stove was $200. Everyone wants to know about the stove. It's a Camp Chef Alpine heavy duty barrel stove. Now these are meant for wall tents. It was about 200 bucks. It's perfect for in here. This space is really small. It's only 10 by 12. And that's what we decided to go with in here. And as much as I can, I will link anything that I bought and that's available on Amazon. I'll put it in my Amazon store in the link below if you want to go check out my store. If you buy anything through my link, I get a small commission, which is just helps the channel. You're supporting the channel for free. So if you want to do that, go ahead. Another common question is what about the power? Uh, there's no power in here. This is off grid. And I use a little power box, which you saw me use last night to power the string of lights, which I think these are definitely not LED and it really drained out my battery really quickly. So we're definitely going to be adding solar, a couple solar panels, and I have a solar power bank that I'm going to put in here and we're going to use so we can power some more stuff. Now my, my computer right now is running off of battery and I, I'm also running the internet off of my Wi-Fi hotspot on my phone. Let me show you some other gadgets and gear that I have. So running the internet right now off my phone using the hotspot and I've got little power banks too that I plug into my my phone and, and keep it charged and I can play music I got my Bluetooth speaker so I can pull up like I just listened to a podcast but if I turn on oh, it was on I can use my phone to listen to music or podcasts or, you know, whatever else. So that's cool. So I got music and tunes. I got the internet with my hotspot. I've got power with solar and power battery banks. So that's how I'm using power. This is what I use in here right now. It's just light and portable. And I plug that in, get it charged up, and then I bring it in here and it's got, this is a 500 watt power battery bank. So that's how I've got power in here. And yeah, we do have plans for solar, for sure. The bed setup, a lot of you are wondering where, how, how am I gonna sleep in here? Well, you got to see that last night. I just keep cots in the storage bench with a sleeping bag, a, an inflatable mattress. Like there's totally enough room for two people to sleep in here on the floor. Then you can put it all away, put it back, and you've got your, your space again. People have asked about a couch or a Murphy bed. Well, it's just space is just not big for, it's not big enough for that. And I don't want that in here. I wanted a couple chairs that I could switch around if I don't, if I don't want them in here anymore. I want it to be uh, simple. And so this is really meant more as, you know, kind of a getaway, a writer's place, a, a place to just chill. Not, it's not set up right now to live full time, though you completely could. I had people like, Oh, that's a shed. Well, yeah, it kind of is. It's set up for it very nicely. You could completely live in something this size. You could also add, make it a little taller. It could have added a, a, a half loft here for a couple of beds, but we just didn't do that. This is just a small, quick cabin that anyone can build. Anyone really can afford if, you know, you're, you're living right. You're not living above your means. You're working hard. You're, you know, Dave and I, <laughs> We, we have done this kind of thing so much, and the reason we can do it is because we don't have any debt. We buy uh, used cars. We, we buy used furniture. This is the first new chair I've ever had in my whole life, and I'm almost 50. <laughs> so, you know, you make choices on how you want to live, which will impact uh, what you're able to do. So we choose freedom and over 
you know, having a car that looks really great with no rust. So stuff like that, we just pay cash for. Every piece of land we've ever had has been bought with sweat equity in mind. It had needed lots of work, but it had tons of potential. Now this right here where this cabin sits is part of property we already own. And our house is at the other end of this property. So we already had this property and we bought this property for cash when we did buy it. So every time we have a project, we take that money and flip it into another property. And it's all sweat equity. We buy cheap, we sell high because we put all the work into it and it's all cash in our pocket. So that's how we make it work. We've always done it like that. People ask, what, what do you look for in a piece of land? Well, you look for potential and possibility and you look for affordability and resources. So it's got to be within your budget. It's got to be something maybe, you know, the cheaper land is going to be farther, farther out and off grid. So uh, that's a bonus because it's not, a bit, it's not as attractive to people without electricity. Well, that's good news for you because it means it's cheaper. And there's land like this all over the country. You say, well, I can't afford that where I live. Well, then you need to find land somewhere else. <laughs> maybe the land in your area is super expensive, but you're living there now. So you figured it out. But going out and getting your own piece of land, it you've got to look for the resources you you need and it's going to sustain you. Got to look for accessibility. You know, it's got to speak to you too. Dave and I always land has a feel. It has a vibe. Put your feet on the land, take a look around and actually see what it feels like. But potential affordability, resources, accessibility, you know, what do you need out of that piece of land? What are you looking for? That's really a personal decision, but cheap land is, is out there to be had. You just gotta go find it. A lot of people are wondering about this giant pane of glass we have, which uh, it, it apparently is freaking a lot of people out. I hear about a lot about shutters. I hear about birds flying into it. I hear about it blowing in with storms. And it's just not something we're gonna worry about. I think it's because it's a single pane of glass people aren't used to dealing with single panes of glass. Anymore you buy a window, it's, it's double or triple paned or whatever, and it seems strong. But this glass is strong. There's, it's going to take a pretty big event to blow out this window. I am not worried about it in the least. We're not going to put shutters on it. I think somebody else mentioned curtains, and I'm definitely not putting any curtains in here. We're very private here. There's no need for curtains, and I want all of the light to come in. And when you have birds flying into windows, it's because there is a light source behind the window, like say another window back here where the birds would think they could fly straight through and that is not the case here. It's straight back to the wall and even this one, it's far enough off, they're not seeing it. There has been no birds flying into that window. Uh, there's a, been a few people asking about skirting the bottom of the cabin with either straw bales or, or something. No, we're not gonna do that. It's it's small building, it's insulated just fine. and. Um, some people talked about wild animals getting under the building. It, it'll be fine. Actually, it's stuffed full of, of building material right now that I'm going to use for the outhouse. And, you know, I'd like to put a deck out front with a, a bit of a porch. And so there are some more projects to be had. And so it'll still, it's evolving. It's still evolving. But as far as actually living here in this cabin, you could totally do it. We lived in a 12 by 12 cabin that we built. Had a half loft in it for two and a half years. And we actually even had our baby daughter Belle in there for six months with us. It's totally doable. We literally had no more than this in the house. We, we did have a small corner table and a little kitchen area, a couple little cabinets, a loft. Literally, that was it and it works. And you don't need a lot to survive. You just need the basics. You need to be warm, you need a place to sleep, you know, some candles. We did end up getting electricity on that place, but it was very cozy. Those are we look back on those days fondly living in our 12 by 12 cabin. It, it can be done. You haul your water and it drips down into a bucket. You do your dishes in a bucket. You heat your water on the wood stove. Like it's so doable. You got to wrap your mind around not being completely comfortable all the time. That's, that's something we as a modern society are just completely used to being comfortable. Having all these modern applications to things that are really basic needs that you don't need. So, you gotta just change your mindset, but you could totally live in something this size. I would do it. I would do it right now. So yeah, the bathroom, that's outside. And like I said, so yeah, the bathroom, that's outside. Taking a kettle bath, that's something I wanna do in an upcoming video is show you how to take a bath. 
with water heated on the stove and it just, you know, what I call a kettle, something about this size. Gallon, gallon and a half of water, you can totally get cleaned up. I've done it my whole life. So I'll have to show you that. So for the outhouse question, let me show you. I never did show you the finished outhouse, so let's go. Now, as I showed you in the build, this is a temporary outhouse. This structure is just gonna stay up all winter. It's just, it's just a portable shelter type, either for a porta potty or changing. I found the sturdiest one I could and I, I drove in some wooden spikes to keep it up all winter. And then when I open it up, I just have a box toilet in here. This is what it looks like. So this is just, Maisie, come on, get back. This is just a really simple solution to, uh, you know, it's a temporary situation here. So when we get the outhouse built, um, this will all be gone. So this is how it works. And that'll, that'll stay all winter. I just keep the snow and keep it, keep it cleared off and it works just fine. I'm not sure if we're going to try to put a well in here that we haven't got that far yet. You can just haul water right now and that's fine. Somebody wanted to, I've got a couple of questions about the folding table. Very simple, it's just a matter of hinges. I'll show you how I did that. I've had some questions about the, the table and how I did the table. It's really, really simple. Look up under here. You've got this one that comes up like this, and then the other side does the same, and then when that's, both legs are up, it just folds. It just folds against the wall when both the legs are up, so that's it. Just very simple hinges underneath. I had a couple of people ask if I do anything differently. No, this is this is exactly what I had in mind. This is exactly what we wanted to build. So it turned out great. Gonna be getting out in the woods again soon to shelters and outdoor winter camping. So stay tuned for that. Just been really consumed by our UP property and then this cabin build. So would I ever do alone again? I wouldn't. I've, tw I've done it twice, that's enough for me. Was, um, they were amazing experiences. Dave would definitely do it again. Would this foundation work for something slightly larger, say a 20 by 24 cabin? Yes, we've built uh, several big cabins in Alaska on this type of post and pad foundation style. So yep, you could totally do something like this with a bigger footprint. Now where we are in Alaska, you need to adjust it because usually it's permafrosty area, so it will, you know, need some adjustments with um, some big jacks and some wedges and stuff, but th that won't happen here. It'll be fine here, but yeah, you, you, on a post and pad foundation, if you need to make adjustments, you can. Have you ever thought about building a sauna? Yes, we've talked about a sauna, so maybe that will be um, coming up. I see you, you and your husband spend a lot of time apart. I'm new to the channel, so not familiar with your relationship. <laughs> We're together 24 seven. We have been for years. The only time I'm alone is when I'm filming something alone. So yeah, we're together all the time. 20, we've been together 25 years. So, so yeah, it was very warm in here last night. I was, I was fine. I got up a couple times and threw some wood in. So that stove did good overnight, but yeah, didn't want a bed in here. So the cots are the uh, solution to that. And someone wants to know where this is. This is in the Northern lower part of Michigan. Not, this is not our UP property. Uh, do you build these to flip? No, you know, we just build these for our own enjoyment. We also don't have plans or cut lists or anything. I'm sure you could go to like a, a pretty ca a common shed building book and find something pretty similar to this to work off of. But we just wanted something small. Like I said, just a getaway. This size wood stove, someone said, do you recommend getting an even smaller wood stove? This is about right in here because it takes full length, you know, pieces of wood, which is nice. You know, you could put uh, 14 inch pieces of wood in here, 16 probably. So it's a nice, you know, size to be real, but it's yet small. So something like this would be great for a space like this. A lot of people want to know about my swinging chair, where did I get it? And this chair. So I got that off of uh, Amazon through a place called Caribbean Jumbo Hammocks. And the link is below. I think they're out of stock right now, unfortunately, guys. And then this chair came from Menards. So someone says, by law, can you stay in the cabin for more than one week? I'm guessing you're from the UK or something. <laughs> yeah, of course, this is our own property. We can be in here as much as we want. I've never built anything. I was wondering how you got started building cabins and showers and outhouses 
And she also says, I like to live where there is a convenience store nearby. <laughs> well, you just start. You just, you just got to do it. You've got to believe in yourself enough that you can pull it off. And it's really not that hard. Now, you saw me finish the interior of this building. And uh, no one was here instructing me. I just figured it out. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to uh, figure it out. Just jump in and go, this is what I want. And figure it out how to do it. Dave was not here one bit for this interior, except for the very top board. I could not reach and I couldn't get it in, so I needed another person to span that gap with me. Other than that, he did not step foot in here, give his opinion, he didn't give his advice. I figured everything out on my own. And I don't have a ton of experience, I just went for it. And that's what you've gotta do, you've gotta believe in yourself and just go for it. There's a no better teacher than doing it. So just do it. You'll make mistakes and you'll figure it out as you go. I've had a lot of people wonder about the wood stove and carbon monoxide and all this stuff. It's not an issue. This cabin isn't that tight, guys. I mean, there's a draft under the door right now. There's plenty of air coming in. I don't need to worry about that. You could always have a carbon monoxide detector or smoke detector. That would take care of that. Um, someone says, do you enjoy camping alone or with someone else more? I love camping alone because you're just on your own and you can do whatever you want. You don't have to worry about somebody else. Usually I'm filming too and it's a it's a burden to people who are camping with me. Uh, and they're usually pretty good sports, but of course I love camping with people. It's so much, so enjoyable to have someone along with you. I want to do the same. It's my goal of life, says Fearless Freedom, but I'm in social security disability and, I have, and I'm 56 years old. My question, do you believe that I have a chance to live in the wilderness before I die? Any advice? It's all up to you. It, you've got to make choices, you've got to be bold, you've got to assess your abilities. If you say you're on social security disability, um, you know, may not be physically capable uh, to build something like this, but maybe you could find someone to help you, or you could find something that's already built and save your money. You could sell your house to get there. Like, there's so many options to reach your goals. You've got to be creative and you've got to want it bad enough to do it. So yeah, don't wait for the best years of your life. Go go chase it down right now. Anybody listening out there, I think you I think you all feel that. Like, you don't need permission, you just need the courage. I have to ask this, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you have to pee and it's cold out, outside, it's cozy warm, do you ever pee in a bucket and throw it in the outhouse in the morning? I, yeah, I mean, in the in Alaska, sometimes we used to have a composting toilet, which was a sawdust toilet that we built, and then we were composting, and so our potty was inside at that point, and then it would get dumped. So yeah, there's been situations where we've done it. I wouldn't do it here. It's pretty small. Honestly, a lot of times I just go out the door and just go in the trees and pee, because it's a little closer than the outhouse, but... Yeah, don't drink a lot of stuff before you go to bed. That's the key. <laughs> Hold off a couple hours before you go to bed and then you can usually make it through. Yep, gonna do primitive camping in some shelters and do some winter camping here real soon. A heat shield, someone's asking about the heat shield on the stove. It's just a piece of, it's almost like roof metal. Got it at Menards. They come in either three or six foot sections. And it's just a piece of cut pipe holding it off the wall with uh, a screw. Very easy. Um, you know, I suppose you could put in sort of like what I did the table where it f folds down right back here to do a bed, but, you know, I'm pretty satisfied with the cots. Someone wants to know in my off-grid shower install video where I found the valve. I got that at Menards. I pretty much get everything at Menards. <laughs> they should sponsor me. So yeah, look for a, uh, a pump there at Menards for the, the shower. Brooke, would you consider an outdoor tub? bath heated by fire for summer months and rainwater oh rainwater that's another question we're definitely going to be adding some w rain catchment and some water catchment systems to grab water so we'll be doing that too and you can always just grab some water and take a bath with that you can heat it up over a fire take a kettle bath you can do a hanging bath you can take a cold shower which i'm into right now i'll have to do a video on that Hearing the turkeys. They must be close. Oh, here's a good question. Do you plan on adding to the cabin? Well, maybe at some point we could add going that way. And uh, we may do that long-term future, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we'll keep this piece of land even. So we'll see, maybe I'll just move this cabin someplace cool. 
Well guys, that's gonna do it for me. Hope you liked the video. I don't wanna take more of your time. I appreciate you, each and every one of you. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next one, this girl in the woods. She gone. Oh, don't forget to get outside and get happy.